Mm -mm -mm. I love me a frog. Just walking itself side to side, every once in a while, doing a little hop. Just a little guy minding its own business until it gets destroyed by a hungry bass and its face ripped off by a hook set strong enough to pick up Thor's hammer. Yeah, I live for that. But in order to more consistently catch fish on the topwater frog, you've got to stop making some of the most critical mistakes when it comes to topwater frog fishing. What are those mistakes and how do you stop making them? My name's Tyler and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! Well, how's it going folks? Welcome back to TRF. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better anglers and catch more fish. And so if that's what you want, hit that subscribe button because you belong here. We're gonna go over four to five main mistakes that I think you guys can easily fix in today's video to make you a better frog fisherman. No matter if you are a bank angler or a bass boat or kayak angler, we're gonna have fish catches and examples to cover both of those avenues today. So mistake number one is more of a thematic mistake and that is that you've gotta understand how weather affects your bodies of water, understanding seasons and your bodies of water is the building blocks, the framework of how to become a better and more efficient bass angler. Because if you don't know how the weather affects your bodies of water at certain times of the year, you're going to be entering your fishing days much less prepared than you could be. So some examples of this, if it's a warm day in the winter, it's still the winter, so the fish are probably not going to hit top water. If the wind is blowing 35 miles an hour, throw in a lure with not much sound, not much vibration, it's probably not gonna catch you many fish because the fish need to hear it. They need to sense those lures. And if it's the springtime and the bass are, for the most part, going to be shallow, you're not gonna catch many on a deep diving crankbait. That's just how the seasons affect bass fishing. And so not understanding that is going to hinder you dramatically, especially when it comes to catching more on the topwater frog. Now staying in the same vein of weather, let's go on the water and discuss how sunny days versus cloudy days affect where and when you should throw a frog. Oh, there's one. Yes, yes, come on. Not a nice fish. Not the prettiest of hook sets. It is that time of the year, folks. Pop and perch gets it done. Now, I don't know if y'all could see it from that first fish catch, but that fish came in open water, and that was actually the second bite that I've gotten today in open water. And the reason why I'm not targeting my frog here around this shallow grass is because we have really cloudy conditions. And when it's cloudy, fish, of course, love to eat top water, both when it's cloudy and sunny. But when you have those clouds that disperses those fish, they usually, in, in most scenarios, especially in the post-spawn summer fall, they will roam and they will feed kind of on more flat areas and not necessarily um, need that edge of that grass or those lily pads for cover and protection. Remember, bass have no eyelids. So if you have high sun, hot conditions, the bass need to hide underneath something or go into deeper water. So when it is cloudy, that's oftentimes when I'll pick up the buzz bait, the whopper plopper, the walking bait. But because it's still springtime and the fish, while they may be aggressive, are not always chasers. They kind of want something presented in front of their face. That's when I throw the topwater frog, even in open water. So yeah, the way that I'm working it, I could throw a topwater walking bait, but it'd be a whole lot less versatile. Let's say that I see a nice little pocket in the grass that I wanna throw. I can't just whip the walking bait with treble hooks over there because that wouldn't be effective and I'd get my lure stuck. So like right there, look at that. Beautiful little pocket. Will there be any bass in it? I don't know, probably not. But what if there was and I wouldn't have had that opportunity with a different topwater? Frog is just incredibly versatile. Now mistake number two when it comes to throwing a topwater frog is throwing it too deep. I'm not saying you can't catch a fish on a topwater frog in 15, 25, 30 feet of water because I'm sure somebody out there has done it. But a frog is designed to be thrown in shallow water. I define shallow water as anywhere from zero, as in the bank, to six feet of water. I do not think you should throw a topwater frog in anything deeper than six. Stop it. So by keeping your frog in that right depth zone for the longest amount of time possible is gonna catch you more fish. And what I mean by that is making casts, whether you're on the bank or in a bass boat, as far along that strike zone, that one to six foot water depth, instead of to that depth zone. For example, watch what I'm doing here on the screen. I am walking along the bank and making as parallel of a cast as possible since I know that's where the fish are. 
I'm not casting out into the middle of the frog as the majority of the time, my frog is gonna be sitting over too deep of water. And because I knew the fish were on the bank along those cypress tree knees, there's no cypress trees in the middle of the pond. So that does me no good. I'm wasting time and not being efficient. Got him. Got him. Jeez, that is big. That fish did not eat like it was big. Bring it up in here. Major League Fishing, slight touch. You want your frog to be on top of where the fish are living, eating, or spawning for the majority of the cast. And then some of the fish catches you're gonna see in this video, you'll notice that even if I was casting across the pond, you know, to the, the bank on the other side, once my frog gets five to 10 feet off the bank, I'm reeling it in to make another cast because I don't wanna waste time. A lot of people I see out there are wasting time on a frog, throwing it where fish are not going to eat it. So your better chances of catching them are going to be being efficient and making casts to where they are. As soon as you're out, make another cast somewhere else. Gosh, dang. Oh my gosh, that was exhilarating. Holy cow. He's not very big, but that dude absolutely knocked the poop out of it. Wow, bring it in here, dude. You are aggressive. Oh, he knocked it and he got it. That is what you love to see. Ouch. All right, you can go on your own. See ya. And my bite that I just had there was very different than Brant Ehlers from the Major League Fishing Tournament on Lake Palestine. Gosh, that's a giant one. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Eight pounds. That big fish he caught really just kind of slurped the frog. I'm guessing that one was on or around a bed, not protecting fry. I bet that was a male bass right there that I caught. That was all kinds of upset because I was interfering with his protection of his babies. Now mistakes three and four go together and they both have to do with not taking advantage of the design features of a topwater frog. The two most unique and helpful design features of a topwater hollow belly frog are going to be the fact that it's weedless and the fact that you can move it slowly but erratically enough to trigger a bite. Here's an awesome example of MLF Pro Jordan Lee taking full advantage of the frog's design features. That looks very juicy. Oh, that was awesome. Yep. I don't have to worry about that. Nice. Jordan, in this example, put his frog farther back into that cover beyond those bushes than probably anybody else did, which of course is a design feature, a capability of the topwater frog that really no other lure has. Besides maybe a skip and jig, Jordan couldn't get any other lure that far back into the area, but a jig would have a totally different presentation than a topwater frog does. And for a fish that I'm guessing was spawning behind those bushes, the only lure that can really trigger that fish who's pretty spooky is going to be the topwater hollow belly frog. And that brings us to mistake number four that you can easily make with a topwater frog, and that is moving it back to you too fast around cover situations. Like I said, the frog can be worked slowly, but still erratic enough to trigger a bite. Jordan skipped his frog back there, and instead of reeling it directly back out to him, as I see a lot of people do with the frog, he walked it back and forth about four or five times within about a six inch horizontal space and that triggered a fish that maybe wouldn't have been able to find that frog quickly enough if he had hopped it or popped it back to his boat too quickly. And that is an awesome design feature of the frog that it can be walked side to side within a very short distance many times to trigger a fish into biting. And the mistake here is that so many people hop their frogs back to the boat. And yes, you can catch fish doing that, especially unpressured fish, maybe open water fish over a large expanse of grass. But if you are in any kind of open water situation, even if you're in a, a grassy area, like you're gonna see on the screen here with a hole in the grass, you can hop it over that grass, and then as soon as you hit that hole, then walk the frog, because oftentimes that's when you can trigger a fish that's looking up that hole, getting ready to feed on whatever falls down it. There are so many times that I would not catch fish on a frog if I hadn't learned the walking technique. So learn the full capabilities of what the frog can do, and walking the dog is an integral part 
of topwater frog fishing. And guess what? If you want to learn how to do that, I've got a frog fishing masterclass video talking about colors, talking about sizes, stuff that we're not going to cover in this video about mistakes. And I will leave that linked in the video description. Now, what kind of frog should you throw? There's really two main frogs besides like the buzz frog and the, the tackle sprinkler frog or the booyah frog that has a buzz thing on the back. I'm just talking regular hollow belly frogs. You've got a regular popping frog like this one right here, and you've got a normal frog that doesn't have a popping lip. For the most part, I'm throwing a Strike King popping pad perch. I love the pad perch. It is a fantastic frog. The only times I don't throw it are when I want to skip my frog underneath a dock or far underneath some brush, just like Jordan Lee did. But for the most part, I'm triggering a fish around lily pads, around the, the edge of grass, docks, brush, and a popping frog is best for that. There's tons of different brands of frogs out there, some extra soft, some extra hard. I think the Strike King, despite being sponsored by them, I think the popping pad perch is one of the best designed frogs out there in terms of castability, in terms of the skirt always being flared. Most frogs have two strands of skirt-like material that you'll find on a jig, the, the oval circular spaghetti type skirt, and they're on both sides like this. Oftentimes, they're gonna flare out in weird styles. I don't like the way it looks in the water. I love that this here is always flared out, and I have found the hookup ratio on this specific one to be amazing. And so I will have this frog and the normal in case you wanna skip or have a better walking action. I'll have them both linked in the video description below. If you wanna get 10% off this frog, use code TRF10 at strikeking.com. Now, one last speed round when it comes to conditions on whether or not you should throw a frog or not. So, is it windy? If it is windy, you should find calm areas to throw the frog. I'm talking about very small calm areas even, behind a singular bush, behind a row of trees, underneath a singular dock. If you're a bank fisherman that has multiple rods, but especially bass boat and kayak guys, have a frog tied on anytime from the spring through the fall, and even if it's windy, and you see a really high percentage good looking spot, if you fish long enough, you know what spots are just good looking stuff, make sure you throw your frog and test it in that area. But for the most part, a frog is not a windy open water lure, but if you want to throw a frog, throw a popping frog, not a normal because you want something that can cause a little bit more commotion in the water. Gosh, there's one. Ooh, what a silent eat, man. Like I kept working my frog and the fish was here. <laughs> Bring it in. You're chunky though. You are three and a half pounds. See, look at that, popping frog even works in the wind. Now, I would of course opt for a different top water if I was targeting a bunch of windy banks right now, but frogs what I got. So frog is what we're doing. And lastly, I think I've said this already, but the most important thing with a frog is to make long casts over productive waters. See this catch here on the screen as an example. I am not casting my frog in this clip over open water into the middle of the pond. I'm casting it relatively parallel over the longest stretch of productive water. From about two to six feet of water is the entirety of that cast. There's one, there's a giant. There's the fish in this pond today were not along the bank like they were on the cypress tree pond I showed earlier in this video. They were spawning and protecting fry outside of the bank line where there's a nice collection of sand and grass. That's where those fish were. They were not along the bank. So I wouldn't make a cast along the bank because that's not where the fish were. You want to be in productive water. I can't, I can't stress this enough. Oh, that's what you're talking about right there, boys and girls. Absolutely gorgeous fish right there. We'll let her go. Oh, well, you going to go by yourself? There you go. I don't mind getting my feet a little wet for that kind of fish. Yes! Bass are extra spooky during the spawn, extra aggressive during the post-spawn, and extra hungry during the summer, and long casts can aid in your success during all of those seasons when it comes to throwing a topwater frog. Unless you are target casting like Jordan Lee was, but I think that is a very small percentage of angling situations. Most of the time you're casting over relatively open water or a big grassy area. If you can't tell, I'm an extremely big fan of catching fish on a frog, which is exactly why I make this video. I want you to stop making these critical frog mistakes because they are super easy to fix and once you've got them fixed you'll be efficient and you'll catch more fish and experience some awesome frog fishing action if you want to see the frog fishing master class like i talked about i will leave that linked right up here in this corner the longer you all stay on the channel the more it helps my channel grow and so whether it's this video up in the corner or any other videos on my channel i would really appreciate you guys sticking around my name's tyler we'll see you next time right here on trf